Hello there everybody, it is me Fizer Bunny, and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So, believe it or not, this is my third attempt at doing this voiceover. I wasn't happy with the first one, the second one, for some reason, got corrupted. Like, it had so much static in the background, so that was unusable. So hopefully it works out this time because I have been putting this build out for way too long and at this point I kind of just want to get it over and done with and move on to other projects. So first of all, happy November to all of you, or should I say, happy Asian pack release month. Yes, we are finally getting a Japanese themed pack through Snowy Escape and I will be talking more about that later but I do want to talk about this build first because as you all know I can get carried away. So today we're actually doing a build for the Simoween collab which is a group collab organized by Sadie Sims. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. It's basically a large group of simmers and we're all doing spooky themed houses for the different supernatural life states. So we all got to choose which one we were going to build for. I decided to choose a spellcaster because I really like the idea of doing a townhouse for a witch. I feel like stereotypically you would think of a witch living in a, you know, cozy cottage, right? but I wanted to do things a little bit differently so I thought a townhouse would be an interesting challenge plus I've already done a witch cottage last year when I did my first couple of builds when Realm of Magic came out so yeah this time I wanted to do something different that's why I decided to do this one there's over 50 of us in the collab by the way so I will try to find a playlist if you guys are interested to see what everyone else came up with I will link that in the description and I also add it on the end screen of this video as well. So let me talk about the build first. So I wanted to go for kind of like a Romanesque brownstone. I saw some inspiration from New York and Chicago townhouses because I think typically brownstones would fall into the Italianate style category right but i noticed that there were quite a few romanesque ones and you can easily tell them because they're the ones that look a little bit more medieval um i noticed that a lot of them had these towers so i felt like that aesthetic fit in really well for you know a townhouse for a witch by the way this fictional universe i came up with for this build was actually really inspired by the harry potter universe so basically in this world magic does exist but it kind of exists as a secret from humans like most people don't really know about it except for the government and the person i imagine living here is actually a kind of person that i would like to call as the magic ambassador if that makes sense i couldn't think of any other way to call her but i came up with this idea of making a sim that is kind of the representative between the magical community and the human community so you know what they do is that they travel all around the world fighting for the rights of magical creatures and supernatural beings so I think you'll see a lot of that in this build as well, especially when we get to the interior because right now, even though the exterior looks a little bit eccentric, I think it's still quite normal looking if you get what I mean, but when we get to the interior, it definitely gets a lot more exciting. Okay, so I just want to take a sec to talk about Snowy Escape really quick because I've been getting so many messages, so many questions about it. So apparently EA had an event last month 
that invited some game changers to produce content for Snow Escape. And unfortunately, we weren't one of those lucky simmers. Sadly, kind of a bummer, but apparently they had limited slots and I understand that they can't have everyone. I'm a little bit disappointed that I couldn't get my hands on the pack because I was really really excited to check it out for myself but you know what it's fine it is what it is it's one of those things that's out of our control and you know I'm still gonna get it eventually so you can look forward to that So this build ended up having two bedrooms and one bathroom. As you can see, I tried to make it into this semi-detached home. And basically, we're only going to be furnishing the middle block of this build. The corner one is going to be unfurnished and the building next door is also going to be fully unfurnished as well. As per usual, that's what I like to do in most of my apartments and townhouse builds. I know I get a lot of angry comments every time I do this, but personally, it's just a preference. This is how I like to do my gameplay myself. That's why I also furnish my builds like this as well. So for the interior, I did try to go for a more eclectic style, which isn't something you'd usually see from me. Usually I do a lot of modern industrial interiors, but this time I tried to mix a lot of modern and traditional furniture and I think it turned out really nice and I think it's pretty refreshing to see something like this from me as well. Notice that I also did a lot of manipulation when it comes to the flooring. I would say most of the flooring I did for the interior is manipulated in some way to not make it look like the pre-made floorings that came with The Sims 4. And I think what's really interesting about this interior is that it starts off pretty tame. On the lowest floor where you would expect to entertain most guests, most human guests, because obviously they don't know that the person living here is, you know, a supernatural being, you would expect it to have somewhat of a tame interior. So there's not a lot of magical items in this floor, but as you go higher in the house, because the house ended up having three floors, as you go higher, it becomes more and more magical. So I thought that that was really interesting. Notice that I'm also using a combination of medieval and modern furniture. I love the juxtaposition of these more classical styles with these more modern decorative elements. I think my favorite detail on this living room is definitely that painting on top of the fireplace. For me, there's something very mystical about that painting, but also something very modern as well. So I really, really like that accent and it brings in the different colors as well because for the most part, I use a lot of blacks and whites, but we also have some red accents as well. So I thought that that really brought all of the different uh, design elements together. And you'll see in this living room, I also used this mask. It's a mask from Island Living and as I mentioned earlier the person living here does do a lot of traveling around the world and I also wanted that to be reflected in the decor of this house. I would say the kitchen turned out pretty normal. As per usual, it does follow that black and white color scheme, but we do have some unusual accents in here and I used mostly items from Journey to Batu for that. You can take this as your disclaimer, I did use quite a bit of that pack in this build. I also used some lights from Journey to Batu in here as well as accents, but we're still on the ground floor and we're still following that trend of pretending like this is a normal house. Thank you. 
I do really love this chandelier I found in Journey to Batu. It's so beautiful and for some reason to me it looks very witchy if that makes any sense. This house didn't have like a formal dining room but I did include this little breakfast area. Might be a little bit of a tight squeeze for your sims but I think it'll work. And yeah over here I'm just putting a little cupboard with some clutter items. I did like that I found that bird skull uh, for display. I thought that was a really interesting thing that you wouldn't normally find in you know somebody else's townhouse but for this witch's townhouse I thought it would work perfectly. Moving on upstairs, this is where it starts to get interesting. Because not a lot of people would get to visit this place, I did get to be a lot more creative when it comes to furnishing this place. So for the master bedroom, I did go for more of like a romantic Moroccan theme and that's mainly inspired by these beautiful chandeliers from Journey to Batu. To me, they look very Moroccan and very on trend as to what's happening with interior design trends recently because I watch a lot of Architectural Digest and literally every celebrity has these lights in their houses. So I really wanted to capture that glamorous romantic vibe for this interior. There's also some red accents as well and I like how it ties in with the personality I set for this person. The fact that they travel around the world, they're probably, you know, searching for a lot of rare magical relics and I imagine them going to these exotic locations looking for these rare items. So for this bedroom, yes, I did go for more of a Moroccan theme so you can see that that carries on to the side tables on either side of the bed and to that painting or poster from Get Famous and to me it looks like the movie Casablanca which is obviously set in Casablanca, Morocco. To me it just gives this place more of a romantic vibe and I really really love that detail. And as you can see, this is also where I start to introduce a lot more magical items. So right next to the bed, I put like a little wand container. I put some spell books on that dresser and this little um, marble column thing, which I also used in the bathroom as well. To me, it looks like one of those little fonts that, you know, the Victorian people would wash their hands in whenever they wake up or something. Also, I included a small office. Initially, this place was supposed to be like a walk-in closet. You can make it into a walk-in closet if you want to, but I felt like as someone who works kind of like as a magical ambassador, they would probably benefit from having a home office, right? So I actually used some really fun Art Nouveau wallpapers for this room. I thought that these wallpapers from Realm of Magic had a quirkiness to them but also felt very modern as well. And again, for the bathroom, it carries some Art Nouveau elements from the wallpaper from Realm of Magic once again. And I did also carry on the black and white color scheme for the most part, which we've established throughout this build as well. Notice that the floor tiles are also manipulated to look a little bit different from the normal floor tiles that we have in game. And I'm pretty sure all throughout this build, you have already noticed me using a lot of the tool mod and I'm using them here to rotate these wall sconces because I actually prefer the sconces to face upward 
To me, they just look a lot more glamorous like that, so that's what I went with. Overall, I would say the bathroom looks pretty normal except for this little font right here. Um, if you're all familiar with some fantasy RPG games, whenever you replenish your magic, you always use mana, which is kind of like a source of magic. And in my mind, that's kind of like a spot for replenishing mana. So I use one of those like glowing orb decorations from... Realm of Magic there in the debug category, and to me it looks like a little mana font. And now we are furnishing the attic portion of this townhouse and in my opinion probably the most interesting room as well. I would say this is probably the most magical room out of all of them as well. This is where I put most of the items that pertain to the spellcaster in Realm of Magic and basically what I tried to do with this place is I tried to make it look like an attic by incorporating those beam details which I love. I've been using that so much in my builds. I feel like for the past how many consecutive builds I've done this beam detail but this time I did them looking slightly different from normal and I really like it. I think this place in particular looks so much like my Witchbrook Cottage build from last year. So, you know, um, that's some um, continuation for you guys, I guess. Obviously, we're putting in some herb decorations and some tomes and some spell books. Basically, just a ton of detail. And yes, it took me forever to furnish this place because I wanted it to feel lived in. I wanted it to feel like the person living here actually uses this place a lot. And funnily enough, this place also ended up being the second bedroom as well. Wasn't really planning on making it into a bedroom, but I had enough space to fit in the canopy bed that came with Rumble Magic, and I was like, you know what, why not? Maybe whoever lives here is pulling an all-nighter and they don't want to bother going downstairs, so they can just sleep here if they want to. That's a more practical thing to do, I would say. And you can't really see them that much, but I included some cobwebs on the wall just to make this place feel a little bit more rustic. And also quite a lot of clutter items from Journey to Batu as well. Those like um, metal container things are interesting. I think they have like aliens inside of them, which are quite weird, but... You know, I feel like it carries on the magical vibe of this place. And I do think that there should be an enchantment on this place because obviously there are windows and people could probably see what's happening if there isn't an enchantment in here. I did try to hide this room, by the way, by using the secret bookcase door but obviously it's not really that secret because when you go upstairs i mean you would probably discover this place so whoever lives here has probably put a magic spell so that people wouldn't find this room And I also played around with the lighting. For this room, I wanted it to be mostly lit by candlelight. So it feels very dim, but also really atmospheric as well. And I'm also adding in some vines on the facade of the house just to make it look more rustic. This is also where I put the mailbox by the way just to the right of the main front door so hopefully the mail person can get to that
And finally for the backyard, we have a little plot of land, just enough to have a little lounge barbecue area and a little herb garden as well. So I put in some planter boxes for our witch to plant her, you know, witchy ingredients like, I guess, mandrake as they would in Harry Potter. Uh, do we have mandrakes? I think we do actually. I think mandrakes was one of the plants that came with real magic and I should probably plant one of those in one of these pots as well. I also included a beehive which I doubt there's any recipes for alchemy that uses anything from the beehive but maybe you can exchange it with one of those bug farms instead that came with eco lifestyle depends on you know your preference they're all pretty much the same anyway oh and i also used that new grill as well i actually really like the look of that i'm just sad that it didn't come in plain swatches because imagine that in black it would look like a cauldron right but yeah i think that's pretty much it for this build before i go I just want to say thank you to Sadie again for inviting me to do this collab. I actually had a lot of fun and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. And please stay tuned for my coverage of Snowy Escape coming soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. But that being said, I'm going to go now. Thank you so much for watching. You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.